Welcome to this week's Two Minute Tuesday. This week is all about key things to know about a natural smoke shaft. Way back along, I made a video all about natural smoke ventilation, and I'll link that for you. But today, we're just going to focus on this one key area. We're going to answer the following questions. When do you need a natural smoke shaft? Where should it be? What should it be made out of? What size should it be? What happens when we get to the roof? And what can go inside it? Let's roll the intro. First things first, when do you need a natural smoke shaft? If your building is less than 11 meters from ground level to top story, has three stories or less above the ground story, has a travel distance from the apartment door to the stair door of four and a half meters or less, and the stairs don't serve a car park or ancillary area, then you're very unlikely to need a natural smoke shaft and can simply have a head of stair vent. However, if any of those conditions are not met, then you'll need at least either some form of facade ventilation or a natural smoke shaft. So where should the shaft be? A natural smoke shaft can be anywhere in the protected lobby. This differs from a mechanical smoke shaft where the positioning is much more important. What should the shaft be made out of? The smoke shaft should be constructed from class A1 material. Class A1 is part of the Euro class system and a class A1 material is defined as a material that cannot contribute to a fire at any stage, including a fully developed fire. The shaft should be vertical from base to head with one exception a maximum of four meters at a maximum incline angle of 30 degrees. The bottom of the shaft also needs to be sealed shut. Next up, what size should the shaft be? The shaft should have a minimum cross-sectional area of one and a half meters squared. The minimum dimension of the shaft should be 850 millimeters in any direction. The best way to describe the reason for that is to use the analogy of a river. In a river, the water tends to flow fastest in the middle and the slowest at the edges. The same applies to the air in a shaft. If we make a very narrow shaft, it slows up the airflow, which is why we have a minimum of 850 millimeters dimension in any direction. It's also important to note that the free area should be a minimum of one square meter in all the following places. So any vents from the corridor or lobby into the shaft, the vent at the head of the shaft, and at all internal locations within the shaft. For example, if you have safety grills in the shaft, they must not restrict the airflow by more than 0.5 square meters. Next, it's important to know what should happen when we get to the roof. The shaft should open at roof level a minimum of 0.5 meters above any surrounding structure within two meters of it horizontally. That is to say, if you had a lift shaft within two meters of the smoke shaft, the smoke shaft would have to be 0.5 meters higher. The other point to note is the shaft should extend a minimum of two and a half meters above the ceiling of the highest story served by the shaft. That can sometimes cause planning issues as it might mean you need to have a chimney extending around two meters above the roof. To get around this, it is possible to use the shaft to serve every floor apart from the top floor and then vent the top floor through other means such as roof vents. Finally, what can go inside a smoke shaft? The answer to that one is only cabling relating to the smoke ventilation system. No controls or any other equipment or cabling is allowed. I hope this video helps answer any questions you had about natural smoke shafts. If you'd like to learn more about these systems, book up our natural smoke ventilation CPD using the link below. In the meantime, if you're not already subscribed, head over to our YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss out. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you next week. Bye for now.